Tonight, we're talking about Ode to the Dragon Slayers, the neo Chitlin Circuit, a.k.a. the Lecture Circuit. Now, people will say, you know, Carla, what are you talking about? You know, how can you be basically uh, using the word uh, cooning and shuffling and all this stuff in the same sentence when you talk about conscious people? Well, I'm going to show that tonight. I'm going to prove tonight that despite all the the talk, despite all the outwardly appearance, Jim Crow is still alive. Jim Crow has many facets. Sometimes it sounds it's buffoonish, clownish. Sometimes Jim Crow can be shucking and jiving and even sometimes threatening and violent. The whole idea of Jim Crow is basically the imagination of white people. It's like the black boogeyman. In other words, basically white people's worst nightmare about black people. If on one hand they have their best dreams and hopes for black people, which is content, happy, go lucky, and then basically you have the angry, uh, dangerous, you know, radical extremists. And uh, people say, well, well, what's wrong with that? Well, the whole idea is nothing wrong. As, 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 there's an old saying, there, to everything there's a season. There's a season to be radical. There's a season to be hateful. There's a th- season to be loving. There's a season for peace. There's a season for war. And there's a season for justice. There's a season for hatred. But when you basically are just one way all the time, either you're overtly peaceful and passive or buffoonish and carefree, you are basically putting yourself into one box. You're not free. Or when you're basically radical, extremist, hateful, 100% of the time, and your message and your who you are as a person is out of balance, you are nothing but also a caricature, a caricature of something that was created for you. In other words, basically, you're doing the same thing that you like. You're fitting a certain mold that you basically don't control. And so I, I want to ask the question, what's the difference between someone who's going to stand on a street corner and be this crazy, mouth breathing radical than someone who's going to be uh, a sambo? Same thing. You're fitting a, a pattern that basically says that my life revolves around what I perceive to be is white supremacy. And I'm going to talk, tie that into what I mean by the, the modern-day dragon slayers. Who are the dragon slayers? Well, the dragon slayer, in, in mythological terms, was the people who basically, even though no one had ever seen a dragon before, the dragon slayer was popular because he went around telling the people that, oh, I can, you give me this magic potion or give me three tails of silver and, or, or do this right here or give me part of your crops and I'll save your village from the dragon, right? So he goes out there and he'll bring back something from uh, uh, the uh, hill saying, look, I slayed the dragon. Sometimes in other cultures it could be I slayed the, uh, the dangerous tiger when there really was no tiger. It could have been a huckster saying that to get free stuff out of the, uh, pe- the gullible people. If you tell people there's a tiger out there and you can, you're going to handle it, just pay me, I'll do it. If you tell people there's a dragon out there, they never see the dragon, and you put enough fear in them, they're going to basically give you whatever you want to keep them, keep the dragon away from you. How does that parallel to our life in America here? Of course. Uh, you know, now, if you're smart, you already don't know where I'm going with this. You're saying to yourself, yeah, I get it. You know, there are people out there who are telling us there's this white boogeyman and this white dragon, and, the, and he spits uh, fire, which is white supremacy, and that if you listen to me, you can protect yourself from uh, this white dragon. Now, here's a couple things here. Let's say that was true, okay? Uh, do, does any of these people that standing on the street corner that basically these prophets of, uh, uh, of black rage and all this, have they ever basically been able to protect any black person from white people or white supremacy? No. If you're walking down the street and a, and a, a racist cop decides to pull you over and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, photo, and uh, stop and frisk you and everything, are any of these radical groups or whatever that's standing on the street going and saying this, uh, the white man, this, the white man, that, have they ever, will they ever intervene on your behalf? Of course not. But bottom line is, but when you get them in their little groups, in their little, in the chitlin circuit, and they're telling you all this, yeah, this, down with this, they got all these big 
thundering words. Yeah, we'll do this. And the bottom line is, those of you who've seen this all your life know that none of these Negroes have a uh, have an ounce of strength, nor do they have any power or will to do anything about uh, uh, what's going on in Black America. And you say, well, 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 I don't understand. Well, the bottom line is, you will understand by the end of the show. Nobody has any power to do anything uh, to change our situation, but the masses of black people need to change the situation ourselves. We could get in the situation anytime we want to. The we, black people, we could have been free 150 years ago if we really wanted to. The question is, do we really want to? And the answer is no. Why? Because people basically uh, 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 know that if you sit there and 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 you sit there and pontificating all the stuff you got people listening to you, okay, you got people admiring you, but the bottom line is you are not going to get, you know, um, you're not going to get any uh, uh, recollection out of it or you're not going to get any benefit out of it, but the person that you're listening to, he's getting uh, recognition because you're coming to see him, you're promoting his book, you're promoting his, his name, his brand. He got his brand out. This branding, his marketing, and branding. Uh, you got the brand uh, such and such. You got brand polite right here. You got brand steady, brand Sarasota steady. You got brand this one. You got brand that one, and everything. And you're purchasing a brand. It's marketing and promotion. Not saying that some of these brothers don't have something good to say, but you have to look at the the game. Notice how when you basically uh, when you look at any group out here now. You notice once I know it's a pattern. You notice you never see them based in any like small or medium sized city. They always in, uh, find themselves in New York and they find them, now what's happened is you, you have them in competition for listenership and oil. When you live in a place like New York where you got listen to a big, huge density population, you know, it may not seem like if you live in a small town, well, what does this all mean? If you can get some, uh, you can get six to seven hundred people at a minimum to come out and listen to your lecture circuit. That's money. There's people, this people living good off of this, and it's all about the numbers. And you got, if you could basically convince people that your ideology, that you were basically some dragon slayer, and, uh, and, and uh, listen to you and everything, they're gonna come follow you. They're gonna come follow you from city to city, listen to what you have to say. But the bottom line is, until then, uh, one day they're going to realize, man, I've been had. I done bought all these newspapers. I done bought, did this. I done did that. And my situation ain't changed. Well, his situation did. He done put his kids through college, you know, and now he's moving on to bigger and better things. You know, somebody probably picked him up, and he might be able to ready to go mainstream, or he probably went overseas and hooked up with the right people and, uh, and, uh, and become the heir apparent of some other lecturer and everything like that. So the bottom line is this. It's all about self-promotion. It's all about self-aggrandizement. That's it in a nutshell. There is absolutely no such thing in the context of America as somebody trying to liberate black people. It's a freaking lie. You know, it never has and never will be. All we have is just one generation after another of dragon slayers who come and promise us the world and promise a thing, and we're still stuck paying the bills. Now, until somebody comes along with a real plan, a real plan to deliver us, none of these people have any right, any claim to, uh, uh, to, to our, our, our support. And that's, the, that's what it is. Now, we can debate this all night. Some people might say, Kala, I think you've gone too far. You're judging people. Look, I'm just saying what I hear. 